If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Maura Murray, please contact the New Hampshire Cold Case Unit at 603-271-2663 or email them at coldcaseunit at dos.nh.gov or contact the family at www.mauramurraymissing.org or contact them by email at mauramurrayfamilydirect at gmail.com. Of course, links will be provided below. Hi, this is Rick, and this is Burn After Reading. Sadly, this is about the recent drama James Renner blogged about regarding Eric Hollins, a.k.a. the Armchair Detective, and Aaron Larkin of the 107 Degree Podcast. Renner alleged that a Ohio woman has filed a police report after being harassed by Eric. Renner grouped both Eric and Aaron together, but one is not like the other. More on that later. I know so many people are tired of this. I understand the frustration. It's completely understandable. The most common and sensible question is how does this help find Maura Murray? Frankly, it doesn't. Um, as Fred has said before, it slows things down. The family would much rather focus on finding Mora than constantly having to defend themselves, especially against things that are either A, conjecture, or B, things beyond their control. The issue is so unnecessarily pulverizing, and it's a classic Renner-style distraction. However, because it slows things down, it unfortunately needs to be addressed. Morris' family is being accused of encouraging hateful advocates of coming after people like Renner or anyone who supports him. He comments on Facebook, Reddit, and Twitter, and posts on his blog and clusters about things that are at best speculation, half-truths, or disconnected facts. I have seen what his fans and admirers write and post. For the most part, they agree with him without question. They accept it at face value, and it's tribalism at its worst. Um, you know, unethical misinformation like that is worth refuting and it's worth fighting against. However, what is also troubling is when someone hurts the collective cause. They claim they support the family, but start, perhaps unknowingly, uh, cause more fires in the forest of myth truths than putting them out. It's something I feared would be linked and associated with good characters, and now it has. I want to personally condemn the actions of Eric Collins, the armchair detective. He sent over 70 emails to this woman, this Ohio woman, uh, doxer, called her place of employment, and so on, because he believes she is associated with someone known on the internet as Folk, who he believes is Maura Murray's killer, which is a huge unsubstantiated claim. In addition, he sent over a thousand emails to law enforcement, podcasters, and so on. What Eric did was harassment. Period. End of discussion. Yes, I know he's been trolled for nearly five years, and I know about the death threats, and I condemn those too, vehemently. But he didn't do himself any favors. He has constantly exposed himself to preventable threats over and over and over. When someone trolls and threatens bodily harm on you or others, especially the ones you love, you report it to the proper authorities and you block them. What you don't do is make it public. Keep engaging and harassing them. You don't justify bad behavior with more bad behavior. For that, Eric must be held accountable for his actions, despite any good intent, which is questionable to me at this point. He is his own worst enemy. I want to make it clear that several, several of us have previously contacted Eric and called him out on his actions. He try, you know, we tried reasoning with him only to be faced with hubris and anger. He'll call us names, attack us, and then later apologize only to do it again. I am about to share some messages and posts. Some of it calling him out. Some are his messages to us. Some of Eric's language is offensive, so be advised. I'd also recommend enlarging your YouTube screen. Uh, you should be able to see the messages okay on a cell phone, but I'd also suggest watching it on a tablet, laptop, or television, or if you have a, if you have a PC. The first set of comments and messages are from Eric after I started Burn After Reading. 
Here are some of the highlights. Now, I thought what he wrote me was pretty bizarre and off-putting, um, but the second set of messages, in my opinion, were, were worse. Um, it took it up a notch. Uh, Eric contacted Jenny from the Down and Away podcast, angry that she made a Reddit post about trolling in the Maura Murray community, and it didn't sit well with him that she didn't give him credit for his work. Um, sadly, his messages only escalated after that, and I'm going to share the highlights.
right, now that we got that out of the way, I would like to make a distinction on what Renner wrote on his blog. Um, I'll link his entry below. While I would prefer not to promote you know, anything that he writes, I want to be fair. For those who haven't seen it, go look and then check out what I have to say. Um, the first thing I noticed is how sloppy Renner's screenshots are. Uh, you get little snippets, but the context is somewhat washed. It's unclear what he's trying to convey, but it could be argued that he's trying to indirectly get the reader to believe that Baron and Eric is doxing D's. Um, now, first off, let's understand what doxing is. All right, It means to search for published, private, or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malice intent. So now that we understand the term, let's imply it. Um, anyone can identify anyone these days. Uh, the question is, is Renner claiming Aaron publicly published the Ohio woman's information? Full name, address, phone numbers, place of employment, etc. Um, if he is, then we both know that's a lie. Um, now, did Eric? Yes. Yes, actually, Eric did. Uh, he irresponsibly doxxed her and harassed her name online, and for that, he should be blacklisted by everyone. It's not my call, but that's just how it is. Um, and let's also be clear that Aaron has called Eric out in the past, uh, like a lot of us. Um, it's hard to give full context because Eric's uh, deleted his Twitter account, but here's what she posted. All right, now let's go over the emails to Folk's mother. We have two people emailing her about Folk, but for two very different reasons. On one side, we have Eric, who in my opinion had no right to contact her. While there is suspicion that Folk might be a, a troll behind some of these emails, it can't be proven as far as what I can see. It can only be uh, suspected. It very well could be that there's a lot of others who just enjoy getting a rise out of him, and because of that, they'll know that he'll bite. Um, but I still think that he's uh, out of line. I, you know, he shouldn't have done it. Now let's take a look at what Aaron wrote. I mean. How do you post something like that and pretend that it's anything other than what it is? Someone who's scared. I mean, it was a desperate plea, yeah, for, uh, for help, you know, especially with this guy, Falk, who, in my opinion, is unhinged. While I don't know all the exchanges and the things that he has done, I know enough. And I am not going to repeat that here. Uh, it's not my story to tell. But for Renner to use that against her and to use it to have others think that she's some terrible person. I mean, come on, that's immoral. It's unethical. But sadly, it's not surprising. I mean, he has a jaded past with this kind of stuff. I mean, the way he used it against Fred and Julie and the rest of the family, this comes as no surprise. You know, with all this talk of harassing, stalking, and doxing, Renner is the biggest hypocrite of all. Jenny at the Down and Away podcast, who, by the way, has been a victim of his doxing, has done some outstanding research, and I'd like to highlight some of it. I want to give a huge shout out to Jenny. This woman just keeps knocking it out of the park, and I want to give her credit because I like to give credit where credit is due. She's an amazing asset. You see, archive sites are not Renner's best friend. As I've come to learn, if there's anyone with a jaded past of this kind of stuff, it's him. But please, I don't want anyone just to take my word for it. Let's take a look, and if you want to know the rest of it, uh, I'll link Jenny's posts below. Um, I think her posts are f really worth reading. All right, let's start off with how Renner likes to harass people. In 2013, Renner posted a picture of someone thinking that this particular woman in the photo might look like Maura Murray. It was pointed out by a Topics user that it wasn't, and I believe uh, this person knew who she was. Renner wanted definitive proof before removing the post. You know, the thing is, should he have even have posted it without credible evidence to begin with? 
The person who ran her questions uh, might have been Mora had to change the settings of her Facebook page and eventually deleted it all together. She wanted no part of Renner or others reaching out. His, his blog post created a wave of harassment. Eventually, he started to delete blog posts and eventually asked people not to name names on his blog, maybe due to possibly litig litigation, I'm not sure. But it was too late. The damage was done. An innocent person's photo was posted, leading to wild speculation, and it led to doxing. She had to change her personal life because of that photo. In another topics post, it's discussed how he could find the identity of a woman who challenges him on that blog um, and topics. Um, he went as far as to write her first name or who at least he thought was the last name or the first name of this girl um, in the post and suspected her with being linked to Mora's disappearance via the Londonberry ping. Since Renner likes to dig deep in people's past and look inside our proverbial underwear drawer, Let's talk about this. In a court case involving his sister, Renner loses his cool on a judge and calls the judge a drunk. He spent five days on contempt charges over that. He, he makes it out that he was defending his sister's honor or maybe, I don't know, just maybe he was just being an asshole. He was also charged on felonious assault on a police officer. Now, it was downgraded to a misdemeanor, but he was in fact charged. He can justify it any way he wants, but let's understand the fact that he was charged. Lastly, let's take a look at this police report. It might be hard to read on screen, but I'll send a link where it's clearer to see. For someone on his blog to report about alleged police report of harassment, it appears the pot is calling the kettle black. Okay. So this police report uh, was from the Pembroke Police Department. Um, the person uh, who's doing the narrative for it is Officer Brian Morgan. And it reads, uh, Sir, Madam, on December 11th, 2013, I, um, Officer Morgan, was dispatched to uh, Redacted to speak with Redacted about annoying phone calls upon arrival. I was met by Redacted. Uh, went on to state and show me via text, uh, which F Facebook, uh, she received a message about a month ago from James Renner. The message stated that he is an author and investigating an incident from back in 2004 that happened in New Hampshire. The message went further, uh, went on to state that after doing some background checks on the involved person, it appeared that she had used redacted social he was inquiring if she knew a girl from Hanson or UMass. Redacted stated to me that she had never heard the name Maura Murray until she googled it after the message. Redacted further went on to state that this morning she had a message on the work answering machine from Renner. She stated she did not know this person and would like the calls to stop. I went back to the station and checked the name Renner on the internet. James Renner is an author and is writing a book about Maura Murray. I contacted Renner via phone and told him that Redacted did not want him sending messages and calling her place of work anymore. I explained to him that she does not know the girl uh, that he was asking about. Um, as I was talking to James, Redacted called the station and stated that James was on hold at the salon. I explained I had talked to James and told him to stop calling. I told her to uh, have the receptionist tell him to stop calling, uh, that she was nothing, that she has nothing to say to him. I told her to call back if he keeps calling. Nothing further report at this time. And forgive me, I did read that pretty sloppily because I'm actually reading it on my phone because um, it's harder to actually read on the computer. So I do apologize for that. Um, you know, in conclusion, uh, is Rennie, I'm sorry, is Renner any different than Eric? I mean, is he worse? Either we, you know, either way, both these men's actions, both past and present, are unacceptable and have done more damage than good. Keep in mind, I'm not talking about making a popular uh, or making this topic popular. Um, how good is that popularity if it focuses on unfounded sensationalism? For the Renner fans out there, how can you justify this? 
if your answer is to point to bad behavior to justify more bad behavior, then I guess you can't be reasoned with. There's no excuse for willful ignorance, period. It's time for certain people um, to stop slowing things down. You know, in my opinion, the best way to help speed things up is for people like Renner and Eric to just step aside. I'm realistic, though. I fear, <laughs> I fear that they'll continue to double down and keep being distractions. But it's the best way to put the focus back on Mora. Everything and the only thing should be about finding Mora. Not going after the Murray family, Bill Roush, Aaron Larkin, Scott Wall, doxing people, making unsubstantiated claims on who killed Mora, harassing people, or spamming law enforcement with daily email reports, or just spamming people in general. Is it too much to ask for? Is hubris, pride, and ego the only thing that matters? If so, I weep for this case. I weep for this community. I only hope closure, uh, whatever that may be, happens for the Mora family, or the Mora Murray family. Okay, so this is an update. Uh, some of you are probably wondering why I removed the video and now why it's being reposted. Um, I just wanted to take a few things out. Uh, one was an error regarding uh, James Renner and a judge, uh, the altercation there, and what he called him. Um, he was simply, he just simply called him a drunk, uh, Renner to the judge. Um, James was held in contempt for that. Um, now, um, you know, to, to James' credit, he did apologize to that judge. I mean, it still happened, but I just wanted to correct one thing. Um, in regards to that and also I wanted to take another thing out which I didn't really think was very relevant to the rest of the discussion that I was doing everything else is still up uh, and then I also I just want to highlight something that has happened today uh, Eric Collins uh, made a video and I'm gonna post his video down below now he has a tendency of putting things I don't know, he publishes them, then he takes them off, and then he republishes them. And, um, yeah, so I I just want to, I guess, highlight some of the disturbing behavior. But if you want to see it in its full context, you can do that. I, I just wanted to put this out here for the record. That's all. I've been getting a shitload of death threats for five years. Five years. And this Ricky piece of shit goes online and makes a YouTube video saying that I'm this lunatic, blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. Fuck all of you. Anybody who supports this guy or anybody who supports Aaron Larkin, for that matter. I'm getting sick and tired of this shit. And people like Aaron Larkin, who really should know better because she too has been a target of this harassment, is encouraging this lunatic, Ricky, to continue the harassment. So at this point, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very upset. Obviously, this this lunatic Ricky thinks he's doing a good thing because people like Aaron Larkin support him, and people like Jenny from the Down Under podcast support him. Um, all the while, I'm I'm all by myself being harassed by everyone online. I I, I really felt like I needed to say something because this is getting really out of hand, and all these lies about me are just culminating into a lot of people that are going to get in real trouble i'm you know there's there's nothing wrong with with listen people have gone on national television like for example john smith and and accused people of murdering more murray or being involved in more disappearance everyone has at one point or another even aaron so you know why am i being held to a different standard that I shouldn't be is it because I'm Canadian okay so that's a lot to unpack I know and I'm not going to make any proclamation about his behavior I would hope by now Everything that you have heard, everything that you have read, I would hope it would be self-evident. Um, and today, um, 
there is a police report and someone sent this to me uh, I assume James Renner broke this um, and I'm gonna read it I'm not gonna post it on screen uh, but you'll find it I'm sure um, if you go to Renner's Twitter Facebook um, and this is by the way not a, an endorsement of James Renner I'm just repeat I'm just reading the report um, because it's public record and it's here so just so that's clear it's an incident report. I'm not going to name the uh, city that this was uh, reported. Um, but anyways, it states, Dispatched to the station to take a report in regards to a harassment that occurred at a particular city. When I arrived, I spoke to the reporting party and victim. She stated that approximately one month ago, she had been contacted by a new person out of Canada by the name of Joseph Eric Collins who lived in St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. She stated that this was over a podcast that she listens to in regards to a missing person. She stated that somebody else on social media platforms of the podcast was very outspoken about her ideas of what may have happened to this missing person and that Joseph thought that this other person making these posts was, and this was redacted due to the fact that they have a similar name. Um, she stated that Joseph had emailed her stating that she needs to confess as to where the missing person is and that the police are going to arrest her and that the family of the missing person needs closure. She stated that this case had happened approximately 17 years ago, making her 12 years old at the time, and she does not know why Joseph believes that she is a part of the case. However, Joseph continues to email her on her work email via spam bot and text her on her work phone as well as her personal phone, which is the same thing via spam bot, which sends multiple emails and texts. Um, on today's date, she stated that she woke up to over 800 inquiries, making unnecessary inquiries to the home um, she was selling in that area. I advised, and her name is redacted, due to the fact that Joseph lived in Canada, it would be difficult for us to follow up with an investigation and that we would do an informal report at this time. I was able to contact the St. John, New Brunswick Police Force. Uh, there is a constable by the name of John Kilfoyle that may be taking reports from this Joseph Collins in regards to the missing persons case. I did leave my phone number and email address for the constable in hopes that I could speak to him and he can advise Joseph to stop harassing the and name is redacted but this woman. She was given a business card with the report number on it and I cleared without further incident. Joseph Eric Collins don't tell me you don't harass people. Now, I'm not saying you haven't been harassed. I never said that. I also never condone the fact that you were threatened or trolled or all these other things. But let's make one thing clear. You harass people. I double down on that. I, I stand my ground. And I'm sorry, did I say seven emails? Oh, I guess 800 inquiries. My bad. I think it was 70 emails that one particular day that guy called you and said to stop harassing that person. See, this is the shit that muddies everything. I mean, we got a private investigator. I don't know if he's still a private investigator. Uh, I don't know um, how. I don't know how much connection he still has with the family, who thinks that I am hired by somebody, and someone is writing my scripts and. Apparently, I'm employed by someone. This is the kind of crap that has to stop. It's nonsense. Um, I mean, we got James Renner. We got him. I think I said all I need to say about that one. And, you know, we have you, Joe. I hate to say it. I'm telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. You got to stop. Please. There's enough going on as it is. As far as me trying to help, yeah, I try. 
Um, I've tried to help you. Uh, I mean, you sit there and you talk about these people make claims of who they think the killer might be. Here's the one distinct difference. No one has ever said 100%. That's the guy. Uh, it's proof. I solved it. Hurrah, hurrah for you. You're wrong. You don't know. And you're harassing all these other people. And these might be trolls. They may not be. But you need to stop. You can hate me all day long. That's fine. But you have to stop harassing people. So stop emailing. I'm sorry. Stop messaging me on Facebook Messenger. Stop littering my uh, comment posts on YouTube. You don't like me. That's fine. Have you noticed I'm not going around, uh, I don't know, in the last like three weeks posting anything on your YouTube accounts when they're actually open? No. I typically try not to respond to you, but recently people have to. You know, I had an initial call to action and part of it was, you know, Anyone that felt targeted or harassed, especially if it was like James Renner. And now I guess in this case, it also has to be you, Eric. I mean, how many other people have you harassed? Anyways, I'm going on a rant here. I'm going to end it here. I'm just really sorry that everything that is happening is happening because it's ugly. It's really, really ugly. And I hope it comes to a head soon crossing my fingers, hoping for the best and planning for the worst. I guess until next time.